Good afternoon, viewers, and thank you once again for joining us for another edition of Captured by Women. My name is Rosmond Aite, and as always, I have my pretty presenters in the persons of Petra and Nanama joining us for the show. Today, we have an interesting lineup for you. We are going to be talking about the some 50 journalists who were deported from Australia uh, on grounds of being fake. And then we are also going to be talking about how prepared we are as a nation for the rains. We know that we almost have an annual event where anytime it rains, we have some disaster. So today we are going to talk about how prepared we are to avert any loss of life and property. And then we will also feature an amazing woman. She is very versatile, doing many things. And I'm sure that from her profile, you will learn quite a few things. So stay with us. It promises to be exciting. We'll be right back. So you are still here on Captured by Women and we're taking a spin on the very interesting topic of some Ghanaians faking as journalists and going with the Ghanaian team to the Commonwealth Games in Australia and it's very worrying. And some developments have come out of that such as the suspension of the Deputy Minister and they're also investigating. So we won't go too deep into it but we just want to find out what people think concerning this very topic. Ladies, is it that Ghanaians are so desperate to get out there and by all means they'll find some way of joining a bandwagon <laughs> to exit the shores of Ghana as it is. Well, I'm not too surprised because, mm. you know, there was a research that rolled out recently, PEW, and it says about 75% of Ghanaians are willing to step out. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't know if it's the air or the grass, <laughs> but whatever it is, they want to move out yeah. to see something. Mm. Is that really what the situation is? Well, it's a legacy issue. Mm. I mean, for as long as I, I can remember, it's always been a conversation. Right. From JSS, we've always been talking about how people are traveling and mm -hmm. migration. It's, it's an issue. I, I sort of felt that it was getting better right. because we were not hearing of the incidents of people storing away mm -hmm. and how it used to yeah. be. But this gives us an indication that we still have a problem. Maybe it's just the mode or, or the approach mm. has become more organized and people are taking advantage of things like this. Mm -hmm. So group events mm -hmm. where y y there's a list and mm -hmm. someone has to put you on the list. It does happen quite a lot. And I quite remember from my past um, job in the airline industry, the several issues like that right. where we always have a situation where if there's like a national con contingent attending a conference mm. or a meeting or something related to a large group, mm. some people always find just a way to try and... Mm -hmm fix themselves mm -hmm. or use that as, as a way to extort yeah. from vulnerable people. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it, it always, it keeps happening. Right. I just feel that this is a very big issue because it's tied to like the nation. Exactly. So it's the national contingent mm -hmm. and it's sports and sports always gets attention. Mm -hmm. And you know how we had the big issue with Brazil. This just brings my mind like, okay, do yeah. we always have to have something like yeah, a sure. scandalous Scandal, situation? Yeah. Mm. But we have to think about what's, what makes anyone feel they have to leave oh, wow. to make it. Mm -hmm. but, but it comes back to the, I mean, the organization of the whole, um, um, let me say, the event mm -hmm. and the people or, or situations that have made mm -hmm. this possible. Mm -hmm. It comes back to the officials who handle the personnel. It comes back to the processes that were put in place. Mm -hmm. um, in my mind, it's, I think it's a clear case of either complicity on the side of persons, either in the sports ministry mm -hmm. Or um, um, at the at sports authority, or it's a case of just gross incompetence. But right. Rosemond, mm -hmm. some, I, I, I don't know what the outcome of the investigation mm -hmm. is going to mm -hmm. be, but there are times where mm -hmm. I know from mm -hmm. experience that the ministry or whoever is organizing the trip may not be directly involved in the list. Right. There could be an outsourced company, could be a travel mm -hmm. agency, mm -hmm. could be an office somewhere yeah. that is doing these yeah. things. And people just take advantage of them. No, but the really. point but is I that the ministry is overall mm. exactly. responsible. Right. The buck stops with them. Yeah. Somebody has mm -hmm. to make sure that the list is clean, mm -hmm. is genuine, because we, this is not, as you said, it's a legacy issue. This is not the first time uh, people do well, such things. So somebody has to take responsibility. Mm. Mm. True. You understand? So it's it's, it comes back to them. I was even asking a you friend know? of mine that how come is the deputy and not the minister himself? Yeah. And I was but I think yeah, because it's the chairperson of the yeah. GOC. Yes. 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 Yeah. So it comes so back to you know, the, yeah. people in authority mm -hmm. um, and their actions and inactions that make such situations happen. Possible. It could also you know? be complacency mm. because it's something that, okay, mm. we don't really think that something like that will happen. Or it's, it's very frequent mm. that it becomes part of the right. system mm. but then maybe the numbers are also huge could have possibly maybe one or two exactly that's but my point you know when it's one or two we can excuse it we can say maybe really the worst no, no, can no, we no, no. no and uh, it, it's not don't get me wrong excuse it as not punishable but it's 
okay, maybe mm -hmm. really genuinely a mistake really happened. Mistake. But when it's six years bloated, no, but you get not, it. There's, there's no, so there's many no people, and that when somebody gets into a list to go to go abroad, all yeah, the time. It happens all the time. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So if all the time it happens, and even this time it's happened again, and it's increasing numbers, it means like you said, it's more organized. Yeah. They seem to have gotten better at it. And so my problem is, mm -hmm. what then are the structures that you know That's this it. Um, um, sports ministry yeah. always puts yeah. in place? Mm -hmm. And what are the checks? Mm -hmm. Or is it that all the time we know we will fix our people? Me, this is my concern. Mm -hmm. That it has to be people in authority who have that power to be able to say, put my person on it. And with that, I can't ask questions. Yeah. That's the Ghanaian way. Mm -hmm. I feel that, okay, sure. if I'm a subordinate, okay, boss says I should put this person's name. So it goes. Mm -hmm. But if it's not them, then really, how do these names just infiltrate that from nowhere? Because if true. I heard about it, maybe someone I know would have, you know, I'm just, <laughs> that's on the lighter <laughs> side. But really, and then my problem is, why would you think that it's okay to pose as a journalist? Why not the sportsmen? Which means someone has given them the idea that this is the way to go. Mm -hmm. It's easier when you attempt to be this. Mm -hmm. So it's a practice. They know it. Yeah. They know the loopholes and, and they're trying to fit it. into it. Yeah. And so that's why I'm worried. I want these investigations to come out yes. and give us, yes. you know, the people who are to be punished. Yes. It's not one of those things that will just say, yeah. well, the minister has been punished mm -hmm. for it. I know there are subordinates mm -hmm. who also have to go down with him because it's over the time we hear this over and over and over again but oftentimes nothing is done yeah, about but it but I, this one, I'm happy I think that, that yeah up i on think it. eventually we'll find out whether mm. as, as we said whether mm. it was uh, um, a deliberate arranged you know right. a situation to get people in there it was definitely deliberate and Petra, let's wait for the investigations <laughs> to come out let's, let's let's give the situation and everybody right. the benefits of the doubt mm. Um, and we are hoping that this will be uh, publicly done so mm. that we we'll all know um, uh, what exactly happened and what uh, uh, to avoid in the future. But right. in terms of the damage to our reputation as a, as a exactly. nation, you know, our brand, yeah, our brand is tarnished. Mm. Our reputation, you know, you know, has been touched. And it takes once you lose a reputation, it's very difficult to yeah. rebuild it. You know, yeah. not exactly. to talk about the fact that. Um, you know, last week when we were talking about um, the issue relating to our actions and how right. and the, the value system and how it, it impinges on what right. we do. These are the very actions and inactions that retrogresses as, as a nation. Yeah. Why must we have such a, such a serious gaffe? You know, and it affects us economically. Investors mm -hmm. will think, will be thinking, potential investors will be thinking, are these Liar a bunch of people <laughs> who can be trusted? Yeah. So yeah. the damage is irreparable. Mm -hmm. And I think that the way to go is to speedily resolve it, let us know, and then those who get punished, punished, or the systems put in place to prevent it in exactly. the future. But, you know, it mm -hmm. goes back to also the morale of the people who mm -hmm. are there to represent Ghana. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you hear something like this has happened to your team, you are demoralized mm -hmm. naturally yeah. as a sports yeah. person because you weren't there to represent Ghana. Mm -hmm. You are doing your very best mm -hmm. to put Ghana on a good pedestal. Mm -hmm. And some naughty ones along mm -hmm. the line are trying to spoil all the good work you're doing. And so when they do this, it's not about you, the individual. Mm -hmm. You may think, well, it's just me. If mm -hmm. there's any issue, I'll be punished and that's mm -hmm. it. But it goes to, you know, the whole team. Mm -hmm. Right now, if they don't come back mm -hmm. with any medals, we've wasted money we've wasted time mm -hmm. seemingly I mean they don't even feel like they need to support Ghana mm -hmm. anymore mm -hmm. to put their face out there for yeah. Ghana because at the end of it what did they get than you know scandals mm -hmm. and all that so sometimes the, they need the to think further has taken the shine exactly out of, out of what yeah. they're exactly. doing yeah. yes. exactly. I, I feel that we also need to think about how we educate our general population mm -hmm. about things like this mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the, the general feeling of I want to travel why do I want to travel how do I get to travel because there's always there's always the the temptation to want to use dubious, dubious means. means to get out. And there's really no problem with traveling. I mean, everybody migrates at a point or goes somewhere somehow. And it's never going to go away, mm -hmm. the fact that people want to travel. Yeah, but it's just true. that how do you go about it? Right. I mean, if you want a passport, what do you do? If you want a visa, what mm -hmm. do you do? It's also mm -hmm. the fear that people feel like, okay, if they walk into an embassy, they'll yeah. refuse the visa. So they have to find another means to go. Mm -hmm. And we may have to begin to engage because yeah. there's so many interesting stories of people selling their houses, mm -hmm. yeah. selling their businesses mm -hmm. for money to give to a connection man mm -hmm. just to go and then they get onto the other side and realize that look, there no, there's no gold on the yeah. streets of London mm -hmm. or US. Mm -hmm. You actually have to work. Mm -hmm. And coming back now becomes a very difficult thing because, mm -hmm. okay, so what am I coming back to? Yeah. I've already mm -hmm. sold. Mm -hmm. And some Everything. even go as to the extent of selling their family property without yeah. the consent of their right. other family it members. Happens. Yeah. It happens it a happens. lot. And tears families thing. apart mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. So we do have to engage, especially young people, yeah. because they become the most vulnerable. They, they hear stories and that make them think that the, the streets of 
everywhere outside Ghana are paved with gold. Mm -hmm. And all you have to go is just go mm -hmm. and you come back. It's the images that we give to them. Mm -hmm. It's the things that we talk about. Yeah. So mm -hmm. all of that. I mean, it's mm -hmm. very unfortunate that we have to always be dragged into things like that. Everywhere you go, people remember Ghana for different things. I like being remembered as a Ghanaian for Nkrumah. I mean, you go oh to places and people say, yeah. oh, you know well, the first thing is people say, Asamwa, <laughs> are you related to Asamwa Jan? I'm like, oh, oh no. Oh, right. But then they always yes. talk about Kwame mm -hmm. Kuma. So mm -hmm. we should try and be yeah. remembered for, for mm -hmm. the good things about mm -hmm. being Ghanaian. I mean, so. we must learn the lessons from this. Mm -hmm. And hopefully um, this, I mean, w will not be repeated. Because it's, uh. I mean... <laughs> Hopefully, we, we can have this situation. <laughs> I, I really we want to hope. I really yeah, want to hope. To hope. <laughs> but oftentimes, when we hope, because we have to learn. Fail. Otherwise, we keep making the same mistakes exactly. again. You know. So we I really hope that you know this particular one would be dealt with thoroughly, and then it will serve as a deterrent, whichever yeah. way it goes. Yeah. You know, to prevent such future occurrences. Yeah. 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 We certainly hope so. <laughs> but I guess what we say here is not what I mean. It's final. But the plea to people outside, like Petra said, that importance mm -hmm. of believing in yourself. No matter how hard your economy is, really, if we don't stay to build it, when I, I think the talk about traveling is not the fact that you can't travel. Mm -hmm. Attempt at all means to travel because there are things out there that you see which are not in your country that would inspire you to even to want do to more. do more. Yes. However, the means. Yes. And the point is, what are you going to do? Do you have someone who's going to even take care of you? And people forget that even when you have a relative, Petra, when you go outside and Definitely. you live with a relative, you won't, you won't they're stay not forever. Yeah, exactly. You, you can't be there forever. Them. You can't depend on them forever because they also have people they have mm -hmm. to take care mm -hmm. of. It's a cycle. Mm -hmm. So at what point then are you also go going to be able to stand on your own two feet? It takes a while. It's a process. So gradually you would get there. Just mm -hmm. take your time. Let God be gracious enough to you. I mean, go through the right process so that when you look back, you know you, you didn't do anything that's worthy of you being imprisoned or yeah. being sanctioned for. You've done the right thing. Then you can move forward peacefully and happily. But well, anyway, guys... Living abroad as an illegal immigrant is not a very pleasant It's very stressful. When you hear me, me, you know, I mean, you're anyone who's ever traveled <laughs> could yeah. tell you that yeah. it, 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 it can be very stressful. Mm -hmm. The kind of stories you hear are just yeah, heartbreaking. Nice marriage. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, so you heard us rant and take a spin on the topic of having Ghanaians who pose as fake journalists being deported. But of course, we hope that doesn't happen again because we want to see Ghana in a better light. That's what we hope here. We hope you hope the same for Ghana as well. We'll take a break. We'll be back on Captured. Welcome back to the show. So today for Big Bang, we are discussing the rains. As we all know, the rains are back. And the question we need to be asking ourselves is how ready we are as a nation to uh, prevent any disasters during this rainy season. And to answer that question, we've been joined by Mr. George AC, who is the Director of Communications at NADMO. Sir, you're welcome to Captured by Women. Uh, thank you. All right. So um, as we said, um, the rains are in. And we know that every year uh, we register some you know, form of disaster um, in terms of loss of property you know, and all that. So we just want to find out from you what uh, measures is NASMO putting in place to prevent any loss of life and property for this rainy season? Yeah, thank you. Uh, as you know, NADMO is a disaster management organization. Mm -hmm. And as part of our preparedness towards the flats, uh, it's twofold. Okay. The structure and then the education that we do. Uh, when I talk of the structure, we are looking at the drainage system mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, towns and villages in the city as well. Uh, how are the drains? Are they free? Uh, devoid of debris and others to allow the free flow of water mm -hmm. okay, is important or the silted. If they are silted, what are we doing to desilt them? Mm -hmm. It's very important. Okay? And other human activities that will impede the free flow of water. Okay? We need to uh, get prepared on that score. And then the other aspect of the education, how are we preparing the people uh, towards the upcoming floods, okay. Okay, or the rains mm -hmm. that's likely to be floods. If yeah. they are floods, mm -hmm. what do they do mm. uh, to get out of the danger of the flats, you know, the flats can, you know, mm. take some people, mm -hmm. destroy properties mm -hmm. and others. Mm -hmm. And so we carry out education from the zonal level to the district level uh, to the uh, regions and the national. Mm -hmm. We have our volunteers, we call them the DVGs, uh, disaster volunteer groups okay. uh, in our communities. So they carry out the education. Uh, at the local level, mm -hmm. uh, at the district level too, we have them helping. 
right. and then at the regional levels do we have the PR units attached to the regions. Mm -hmm. uh, we've just created a complete uh, communications directorate at NADMO. Mm -hmm. That's the first time this has been done so we can engage the public properly on, on how to uh, conduct themselves to avoid mm. disaster. Okay. okay, so these are the Mr. You see very well. It. What you said, really, for most of us, I don't think we, it's new. Yeah. We keep hearing this over and over again. I'm interested in finding out in this particular year, is NADMO bringing anything new to the scene in terms of how to manage these floods? First of all, I remember you earmarked some, disaster, some areas, safe areas, shelters that people could go to if there was even a flood. How safe are the shelters that you've even earmarked? And how prepared are they to shelter these people? Because if it's just a bare park that we've opened and say you can come there, and supposing someone's place is really flooded, they're going to have to stay there for more than 24 hours. Whilst I'm there, what do I do? How do I sleep? How do I take care of myself? So when you talk about education, I'll be willing to hear more about this. But tell us a bit about what NADMO is doing. Yeah, thank you. Uh, as you know, NADMO has a unit called the Relief and Reconstruction Unit. Okay. And so when there are victims of flood and others, uh, as you've said, we take them to the safe heavens. And so if they are there, uh, we take care of them in between time, 24 hours, 48 hours, or 72 hours, mm -hmm. uh, we will take care of them by uh, providing them with some relief items. Mm -hmm. uh, if we need to feed them, we'll mm -hmm. feed them. We get them uh, mattresses and others to <laughs> sleep and rest mm -hmm. at those places. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in between time, as long as they are those safe uh, havens, they are our responsibility mm -hmm. as NADMO. And so we do uh, take care of them. And then thereafter, uh, we we'll look at their property. We mm. need to reconstruct, right. okay, resettle them. Mm. That, that is also what we do. Uh, if we can support them to bring up the structures and co, mm. we'll get the relevant agencies. You know, we are a coordinating agency. Right. Okay. And so as a coordinating agency, we mm. have other agencies like the Institute of Engineers, the assemblies, mm. okay. uh, the fire but service and others. Before you get mm. to yeah. the point of reconstruction, I'm very concerned about the issue of logistics. Because mm. last year, every year we have rains. Mm. Yeah. Every yeah. year we have rains. And yeah. every year we, we hear the story of Nadmo saying, putting up their hands in the air and saying, we don't have what we need to help people. Yeah. How different is this year going to be? Because I, I commute in an area that is flood prone. And I see it every year where people's homes are flooded and they, they lose property. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you talk about going into safe places, it's a good thing to have safe places. But when they get there, because I remember last year, there was the issue of sure Nadmo okay. saying they just had mattresses and plates. They didn't have enough to take care of them. So what's different this year? Because mm -hmm. we, I, I feel that it's not your responsibility to make sure there are no floods. Yeah, of course. You can't handle that. Um, the fact that the drainage system is not the, what it should be or that mm -hmm. Attitude now change that we need to ensure that people are not dumping things in the gutters is also not your responsibility. So yours is to... It's part of our responsibility. That's why we carry out the education. The education. Yeah. Okay, great. So I'm going to ask you questions about that as well. <laughs> but what happens with the logistics? Do you yeah. have the logistics? Should, should the populace be, be comfortable and say, touch wood, something happens? Nadmo is going to take care of me. Yeah. Uh, that brings me, when I started, I said there's some budgetary matters, mm -hmm. so we need to speak to the budgetary mm -hmm. uh, matters. In 2016, the budget allocated to NADMO uh, for relief items was 33.8 uh, million Ghana mm -hmm. cities. But the In actual, 2016, 2016 okay. the actual uh, was 10 million mm -hmm. that was released. was released. Yes, okay. and so a deficit of about 23.8 mm -hmm. uh, was left. In 2017, the austere measures and co. So a budget of mm -hmm. about <laughs> 30 uh, million was given uh, to NADMO. Mm -hmm. In reality, 5.9 was released. Mm -hmm. uh, austere 2017, the government had an embarked on an austere measure. And then uh, in 2018, this year, mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at 52.9 million mm -hmm. allocated to NADMO for and relief so far, yeah. items. How much has uh, been so far, you know, the first quarter mm -hmm. preparation for the release is yet uh, I've been briefed that the processes have been concluded. It comes in tranches. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come mm -hmm. this day. On matters of the administrative budget, mm -hmm. that's different from relief items. Mm -hmm. okay. The administrative budget, too, you know, has its own. In 2016, 3 million. 
No, but uh, please, actual, before you move, yeah. I, I'm concerned about, you just mentioned No, I want to... Has the money for 2018 been released? Not yet. No, no some is being released. Okay. okay. Yeah. So now let me, let me bring dovetail it into uh, the, on the relief items. Mm. Uh, sometimes we do what we call pre-positioning. Uh, with pre-positioning, it means you procure the items in our warehouses and then we forward them to the regions and then onward uh, transmission to the consti uh, sorry uh, uh, districts okay. districts okay and then the district deal with the communities that right. call and so we have warehouses mm. at all these places okay so as we speak our four major warehouses in the city in the capital are well stocked mm. okay and we've sent some items into the regions but the regions are not well stocked because uh when you send them they're in anticipation uh, anticipation of the flat mm. that is coming mm -hmm. other things may happen okay but forms when of you talk disaster about stocks, and so they may yeah. use some of them you get it George, so when that you talk is about stocks and well stocked what is stocks and what is well stocked so that we understand what our <laughs> sense of readiness mm -hmm. is yeah. because everybody <laughs> watching us at home is thinking okay what happens when there's a flood mm -hmm. Should we be expectant and say, okay, maybe when I'm right now, let me go along with the blankets? Mm -hmm. Would Nadmo have, what does Nadmo have? We, and we should know so yeah. that we can manage yeah. our expectations. Yeah. So when you say stocked, the four centers in Accra are stocked, but the regions are not well stocked. Yeah, yeah. What but is stocked? Forward like them how many people can the centers in Accra cater for? And how many can the regions cater for? Yeah, uh, you know, we do continue stocking. That's, that's important. Mm -hmm. And then saying the four warehouses are well stored. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at, say, let's say about 10,000 people, victims, mm -hmm. you know, affected. Mm -hmm. right. okay. You know, we can take care of them for about two weeks mm -hmm. in the, with what we have mm -hmm. as of now. That mm -hmm. sounds then, like a lot. Yes, mm -hmm. then we can restock those ones. Mm -hmm. You get as, right. as, it, as it goes okay. on. But coming yeah. back to the issue of education, so... Bec you said that you have a team, you have the disaster volunteer groups yeah. who are in communities, yeah. district, yeah. regional. Yeah. Um, so what is the structure? Because I don't feel any... I've never been engaged um, by anybody. Any, I've never I haven't heard any seen heard education. any message relating to preparedness for the rains, what mm -hmm. you should do, what you should not do. So because a, a larger pant, uh, a part of the preparation is prevention. Yeah. So and that is our in yeah. Yeah. so in terms of the ed education drive, what's yeah. happening at that front? Because I don't I haven't seen anything yet. So oh, oh. what exactly probably you can use this uh, yeah. opportunity to also yeah. share information. Being here is even part of it. Yes, you yes. agree with me. Yes. Yeah. And we have our, our officers also moving into the communities mm -hmm. around and then in the localities. If you they say move. communities, which communities? Yeah. Do oh. you have for, for for instance, we know they are flood prone areas. Yeah. So is your focus on the areas that, um, uh, is your focus on these areas? Yeah. Is that your, in terms of uh, your, your progression? Yeah, Are you your priority now? With a community uh -huh. visitation. Yes, is yeah. your priority on the flood prone areas? Yes, we do that. And okay. then the general education uh, using the media, mm -hmm. the television, the radio, mm -hmm. And then now, to mm -hmm. be, we have prints. These are printouts. We mm -hmm. are trying to uh, collaborate with Graphic and Times mm -hmm. to see as mm -hmm. they've been doing for snakes, so that okay. they put their so newsletters put an, uh, and others the, okay. in the pages of the graphics. So we can uh, put some of these things in the pages of the papers. And then as they no, move right. along the country, these things are mm. uh, distributed. But for those who need it most. Mm. Yes. No. Is that, I mean, I'm just thinking, for those who are most affected, because we, we don't normally have a typical demographic of mm -hmm. those who are yeah. affected, yeah. how does putting a flyer in a newspaper reach them? I mean, I, I'm just mm. trying to, in terms oh, of the priority. Language. Language. A good, a good yes. example. Oh, English. Does yeah. it, is it translated in other languages for the yeah, we, people? Yeah, we, we put our people on local programs. No, no, we're talking yeah. about the, the literature. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, no, for now. Okay, so it's all in English. Yes, it's in English. Okay, so, um, yeah, we are Mr. trying to get partners to help us right. to produce okay. in our there's a There's an yeah. area in Accra, I'm sure everybody knows. <laughs> Kaneshi First Light, Kaneshi Market, that area is seriously flood prone. Yeah. And so the market is like the biggest community in that mm -hmm. area. We've started the education. We've started the education. But, mm. uh, but in assessing your education, do you think it's far reaching enough? Because no, uh, it looks as if we're waiting until the rains really get people. No, we have no. numbers of people, you know, dying or passing away. Then the Bruhaha starts no. and then Nadmo will react no. as expected. No. Because we don't no. hear, I'm being honest. 
honest. Yeah. We sit on TV yeah. every time, yeah. but we haven't heard no, no, anything. Yes, we, 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 we've now set up our complete communications directorate. Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, began these things. And we you had a yeah. Yes, I was going <laughs> to say. <laughs> well, let's 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 too late. Late. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because over the time, we've had these disasters happen. Yes. So this is not going to even be uh, our first year. It's been happening. Don't you think your education should be a continuous program? It's been so. so. When, it hasn't, when but how come we just can't recently feel it? We on the we ground were, don't feel I'm it. surprised you say so. Mm. Because recently we... Mm -hmm. Uh, during the dry season, mm -hmm. fires and lightning. Mm, yeah. We're all over educating the public on this. Yes, for place. fires, but not for yes. floods. Yes, and mm -hmm. so it means right after that, we've. So, right you know, so, if it's the, into what we're you saying, know, that you'd been, wait for myself, a dry I've season. I've been on other platforms. Mm -hmm. yes, educating I've been, people. yes, educating people. But you're just my men, but my you're men just are all over. You're just you I, put, so I put my di technical directors on TV, on radio, okay. to speak to the issues. Right, okay. but like you yeah. rightly outlined, yeah. that during the dry season we're talking about fires because that seems to be the focus. Yeah. But can we make it a continuous program such Definitely. that even Definitely. in the dry seasons we're Definitely. still talking about the Definitely. floods? Definitely. Because we know they'll Definitely. come. But let's go back to prevention. Yeah. I'm worried about these flood-prone areas. And you, I'm coming to you because you say NADMA is a coordinating body, yes, which is brilliant. Yeah. So yes, you're educating us. Don't put, let's make desilting a habit. We're taking, but they're not doing it. It's not being done on large scale. And so mm -hmm. we'll have the floods come. These flood-prone areas ahead of time, is it possible to move them, relocate them, rather than wait for the disaster to happen and then resettle? Has Nadmo thought about that side Definitely. Well? The, the new act, uh, mm -hmm. Act 927, okay. is the new act okay. that empowers uh, Nadmo okay. uh, to take certain decisions. Okay. The previous act didn't give us those powers. Right. Now, uh, when we have buildings and other structures and waterways, mm -hmm. Nadmo is empowered to pull them down. Right. Okay. Right. okay, But mm -hmm. there's, mm. there's the a lot of that. That's a case. That's oh, okay. <laughs> mm. Now, that but mm. is uh -huh. we need an ally to make it effective. Right. Oh. Okay, you, I'm an ally, and okay. the, 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 the ally has been drafted and forwarded to parliament. Mm. So okay. the, once it is passed, mm. then we clothe with the powers to so act uh, with those authority. Right. Mm. Until then, mm. is the Metro Assembly, the District Assemblies that and co, that yeah, that has the, those yeah, powers. We collaborate with them. Mm. We so have so their, I think uh, either Petro and uh, Nanama sought to find out what is being done differently this mm -hmm. year round. So mm. you said that you fully set up your communication directorate. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of the interventions, is there anything different that is being done so that we'll see a different kind of result? Is there anything different that you're doing apart from the strategy that you've adopted previous years for this year? We, we have our machines at points that are draining uh, the drains, okay. most of them, Therma Community 18 okay. and 20 as we speak. We have our uh, dozers okay. and, uh, and, and okay. excavators mm. there okay. working. Okay. You get it, and okay. other places mm. across the nation, mm. our men are working okay. on that so that we can have uh, the drainage, you know, open up, open up mm. for free flow of water. Okay. Uh, that's important. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I just have one last question. Yeah. There's a large number of young people who live on social media is not more engaging mm. the definitely, communities on social media. Okay, so is there any are there any handles you like to share with us where people can find information? Uh, uh, we have our uh, Nadmo, okay. you know, on Facebook, okay. uh, Nadmo .gh, uh, I think. So when we go on Facebook, yes, we'll just we'll find Nadmo. Nadmo. Right. 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 So we we'll get information. Okay. Right. That's we cool. that, yeah. Okay. Um, we've had Mr. AC from Nadmo speaking to us about the plans they are putting in place um, to at least lessen some of the uh, the level of disaster we usually have during the rainy season. So don't go away. We'll be right back with the other segments. Welcome back. On Career Woman for today, we have a lovely lady who has joined us in studio to discuss her interesting transition from the corporate world to successfully starting and running her own business. With us today is Alma Shirley Martins, who happens to be the CEO of an interesting business, and we're going to allow her to talk about her business and everything that she does. And interestingly, it's something edible, <laughs> which is exciting for me. <laughs> I just want so let her get to it. <laughs> so tell us, um, for me, I was very excited to read about your transition mm -hmm. from corporate into mm -hmm. owning your own business. I'm, I'm, I want to know the story. So how did you decide to leave banking and then go into starting your own business? And how was it like for you? Um, I left banking when the conditions was not so conducive for me. Okay. 
my I was at the credit department. I was with the credit department. So my job required me going out to mm. meet clients. Sometimes you go and there's dust, the fumes from cars. It took a toll on my health. Mm -hmm. So I sat down and I thought about it and I decided to just do something for myself. Mm -hmm. Growing up, my mom is a caterer. So we took up um, to cooking for occasions and all that, which I really loved and mm -hmm. I still do. So I was like, why can't I just go into something like that mm -hmm. and do something for myself rather mm -hmm. than being here and always falling sick here and there. So I, I left the bank and I started with a corporate catering. I was actually serving uh, food, lunch, mm. to be precise, to banks and other institutions. And I was doing very well until the place where I was working, um, an issue, there was an issue with that place actually. The person who rented the place to me was like, okay, I want to sell the place to you. Mm. And I, I, I was really interested, I wanted to buy. But I was cautioned by a hairdresser who was just next to me. Mm. And she told me that that whole place belongs to um, Railway. Mm. Okay. That's the Nyaho mm. Strip. Right. Mm. Okay. Mm. okay, so I went to Railways to Very find high out, high. to yeah. verify. And I was told that I was the fourth person mm. coming to verify on that same, same piece, piece of property. Yes. So... Uh, railway <laughs> got upset and they came to lock up the place. Okay. So I had to fold up. I went back to the house mm. and I was still doing it from there. Mm. And then I developed interest for cake making. Okay. Mm. So I was still doing corporate catering from my house. Mm. Okay. Then I was doing cake underground. So for me, the cake, the cake making actually became a boom. When mm -hmm. um, on Fridays, when I'm going to serve lunch, mm. Uh, I give them fruits, sometimes drinks, mm. sometimes I surprise them with a cake. Yeah. Okay. So everybody was like, oh, your cakes are nice, mm -hmm. your cakes wow. are nice. Then I was like, so why, why don't you rather yeah. go into mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. Then I decided to take up the cake seriously. Okay. So I've been baking for the past almost five years now. Okay. Full and time? I, yes, into, full into, time. Yeah, okay. I, I've actually stopped corporate catering. Okay. I only do food for weddings, mm. for occasions, mm. for functions. Yeah. Okay. But the cake is the main the thing condition. I do. So I started with a school two years ago to okay. teach, okay. which I'm still running. Okay. okay. So wow. your, your experience with cooking, catering, and baking, was there any formal training? But you, you talked about the fact that your mom was already into catering. So is it something you picked up naturally, or you had to go and get skills training as with well? With the food, there was no formal training. With the cake, I actually took some training from someone okay. but it was not up to my expectation I think it was it was not really what I was mm -hmm. expecting mm -hmm. so I stopped along the, mm -hmm. the way and I took to learning on my own mm -hmm. so there are times I travel outside the country to learn I look out for those who are doing well in other countries and I travel to go and learn from mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. so most of the time I'm outside mm -hmm. learning this, learning that. Yeah, okay. Because I run a school, you have to be mm -hmm. yes, on always yes. yes. So uh, yes, yeah. I go out most of the time to learn. Mm. I'm still learning though. Amma, okay. let me backtrack a bit in this whole journey. At the point where you said because you know you were leaving the banking field, you were cooking. You had had you started the corporate cooking, or you left completely before starting? I left the bank completely okay. before I started the corporate okay. catering. Right. So there was no gap where you were bridging. But mm. anyway, I'm just interested in while you were at work in your corporate field, did you ever try cooking for your friend, the people in your workplace or anything and get the inspiration from that? No. no. no it was just <laughs> a, that's that's a, 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 a interesting. Yeah, it is. So what, how did you just decide to leave and start something? Okay, or what was the timeline? Did you like start, stop work on Friday and start the business on Monday? No, what, that gap? when I actually stopped, mm. the, you know, when I was in the bank, there was a woman who was bringing us lunch. Okay. So anytime they come, Sometimes the food is good, sometimes it's Off. not, you know. And I'm like, I can, I can do, do better. <laughs> I can do I can this. Do better, and yeah. you know, when the woman, mm -hmm. the, at that time, the corporates, the banks were actually mm. paying the caterers okay. monthly. Mm -hmm. So they take care of the, uh, uh, the food for mm -hmm. the workers. Mm -hmm. right. 
unlike now that they give the money to them and they top up to mm. pay. Mm. So when she's coming for her money, you realize that, you know, she's making so much mm. and she's happy. She mm. looks fulfilled. Mm. So and sometimes the <laughs> food is not really on point. So I was like, look, yeah, I, can I can do, do this. Yeah. Better. Better. So let me yeah. just... Yeah. So what I decided I was going to leave the bank. I had my plans. Yeah. Yeah, you had thought this through is it. What, yes, yeah. this is what it. I was going to do. Mm -hmm. So when I left the bank, less than a month, I started. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. But and and I, the I reason I why I ask mm -hmm. about that mm -hmm. um, gap, because usually people, they jump and then they find out that, okay, I what did I just quick. do? I yeah. jumped too quickly. <laughs> so I was trying to, which I was wondering if you had like a backup plan. So what happens if the business didn't mm. go as planned? Did you ever you think that? I never thought about that because I was really positive that mm. it will work. Yeah. Okay. I am, I am one positive person. Obviously if I set out profile. to do something, mm -hmm. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, it has to work. Yeah, it, has to work. it has to work. It just has it's to work. It's possible. It's, yes, it is. Yeah. Right. It's very possible. possible. So. I didn't think about what if I the fail, negatives. what yeah. if it doesn't well, yeah. it doesn't work out. Which no. is the reason why a lot of people yeah. don't try anything new. Because yeah, they keep true. thinking, yeah. what happens yes. if I fail? Yes. What happens, what will people say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so they I don't think try. about that. Yeah. If you don't fail, you don't learn. Right. You know, so mm -hmm. even if I fail, it wouldn't It'll stop me. Stone. It would right. rather be a stepping stone for me to, to learn from my mistakes and rather build on that and move ahead. Reading your profile, I realized that, okay, so you are a past banker. Ketra, you are an aspiring communications professional and, and a, a judge. judge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? That's a very interesting combination. Mm -hmm. So in terms of future prospects, is it that you intend putting the business on hold and pursuing? Because I know that you said in the profile, you said that you had to put the communications um, studies on hold due to one or two reasons. Mm -hmm. But you do aspire to go back to it and then also become a judge. So in your timeline of future events, where does that come in? And Because it's quite an interesting mix and I'm intrigued to know about that. You know, starting the, the cake business, mm -hmm. it's, it's very involving. It's mm -hmm. very time consuming. Mm -hmm. But I have gotten to a point where if I don't go to the bakery in a week, mm -hmm. we'll still sell. Okay. I have trained my workers to work like me. Yeah, okay. I train them from the scratch. I don't just take people who already know how to bake. Mm. I take people, even if you know, I still teach you how I want it to be done. Mm. So my, I have five workers now. Mm. Okay. But they do everything, even if I am not around. Which is really great. Mm. So... Mm. The whole of this week, actually, I've never, I've never, I've not been working. In but businesses, yes, of boom. course, okay. <laughs> business will still go mm. on. I receive the calls. I tell them, okay, we have a cake for tomorrow. Mm. We have a cake for Friday, mm. and they do time as I it. want. Okay. Do you get okay. it? So a time will come where yes, I can leave them. Even now, I can leave and just go to school mm -hmm. and do what I mm -hmm. want to do. So it's not like I'm going to put my business on mm. hold to become mm -hmm. a judge. Mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. Becker's bar is not going down now. Anyway. Exactly. I was Definitely say, you not. Never have, you haven't mentioned the name of your, your company since we started this yeah. tour. So I'd want to know. And also to tell us some of the things you've been able to do at Baker's bar. Okay. Oh, the types of things that you, yeah. I mean, you bake. The types of, I mean, I'm sure we'll see this one. What else? So yeah. what exactly do you do? What are your range of, you know, uh, products, um, so to speak? At Baker's bar, we, we do cakes for weddings, okay. birthdays. Um, engagements, okay. parties, mm. we do pastries, okay. we do food when we feel like. Okay. Mm. When we are very, we, when we have um, a lot of cake orders, mm -hmm. I don't take food orders. Okay. So I know when to take food orders and when not to. Okay. So with our, with our prizes, our minimum is 150 Ghana cities for, for, for a cream size? cake. Okay. That's an eight inches size. Okay. Around eight inches okay. cream cake okay. with fruits on it. Mm. If you want fruit with chocolate, then we are talking about 200 Ghana mm. cities. Okay. Okay. So, and that's our minimum, actually. Okay. Okay. So where is Baker's Bar and how do we get in touch? Baker's Bar is located in Dansuman. Mm -hmm. We are close to the Liberty Sports Stadium. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I have, I have but you, okay, you'll okay. be talking. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Alma, I just wanted to find out. I mean, mm. wow. wow. This is beautiful, Alma. So what, is yeah. this flat edible? Yeah. Or it's just indeed. decorative? It is edible. Wow. So what do you use to make it? I'm just interested. I use flat paste. We call it flat paste. That's what we use to okay. do the 
flour. So the you sugar carved flour. it out yourself. I mean, you molded yes, the flour. Yes, I teach sugar flowers. Okay. Okay. So, I do. so if someone wants to come to learn, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how much does it cost for a program? I have different packages. Okay. For the beginners mm. class, mm -hmm. it's two thousand Ghana cities. Okay. And that class is for one month. We provide all the ingredients and the tools you nice. need. After the mm -hmm. beginners class, mm. you come for the master class. Mm. During the master class, that is where we teach how to work on wedding cakes. Okay. I teach a bit of sugar flowers in the master class mm -hmm. as well. And that class is 1,500 CDs for five days. For five nice. days, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, Alma. <laughs> <laughs> the money has I'm, got you I'm, all. I'm so interested in the... Do you have a class like for the everyday woman who mm -hmm. works but wants to learn how to bake cakes for her own yes. family yes. and yes. consumption? Yes. Okay. I have classes like that. I have two days whipped cream cake class. Okay. And in that class, you learn how to bake a red velvet and a chocolate ah, cake. Yes. Mm. So within and two days, within two you can learn to yes, that? Yes, you can. Okay. okay. Then how much does that cost? That's only 500 Ghana cities. Oh, then we're in business. <laughs> okay. I have to enroll. Okay. Yeah, it seems okay. everyone will enroll I have there. that class coming up on the 1st and 2nd of May. Okay. Okay. Next okay. 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 So overall, how many people would you say you've trained over the years? I have trained over 120 students. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I okay. have. Okay. Some of whom work with you, obviously, or? Yes. I oh. have some of my students who are now my workers. Okay. I have students who are now working on their own. Okay. Some of them are doing very well, okay, okay. very well. Okay, so I was about to ask a question about, you know, looking at you and reading your profile um, and looking at what you've, you've done, what you've achieved, how you've spread yourself and all that. There are so many uh, people watching us, especially women, who sometimes I think maybe they are, they are stuck in the routine of life. Mm. They want to you know, be versatile, they want to try something, but they are so burdened as to how to go about it, what to do, how to get started. What, 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 what would you want to say to people either who are watching you and who want to be like you and who want to break out and do something different? You know, this part of our world, mm -hmm. um, I think we've passed the era where people think women should be put in one little corner. Mm -hmm. For me, I don't think anybody can put me in a corner. I can't even survive there, mm -hmm. seriously. Mm -hmm. I like to make my own money. Mm -hmm. I like to do what I want mm -hmm. to do. So if you are a woman out there mm -hmm. thinking about what to do, thinking about how to break out, mm -hmm. look, some, I know some of them are actually scared. Mm -hmm. What if it doesn't work mm -hmm. out? Yeah. What if? Look, put those negative attitudes behind. Mm -hmm. okay. You should be positive. Whatever you set out to do, do it well. Mm. Mm. Positivity, it's, it's, it's just, that is all you need. Okay. Just be positive. Just tell yourself that it will work. work. Okay. When you start and you have hitches, just sit back, mm. analyze what happened. Oh, what, what didn't I do right? Mm -hmm. And just get back on track. Mm. Okay. We have passed that era where, okay, he needs to give me money before I do this. No, no. It should be your life. It should be do something for yourself. Okay. Okay. Anyway, and on so? that note, it's time to cut. Okay, I can't wait for you guys. To, oh, but the knife is very small. But uh -huh. Wow. <laughs> it feels nice to cut. Soft? <laughs> yeah. Well, not too soft. Is there not chocolate too in hard. this cake? Just. Alma, Petra, you sound like if there's no chocolate, eh? you pass out. I mean, I'm. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> chocolate is my it. This knife is so small, we can barely okay. even get a we'll piece of. Okay, but I see red velvet. Oh, red velvet. Oh my that God, this well. just looks. <laughs> people, I'm this going to just do looks. communion because I can't get the whole piece out. But okay, let's let's just dismantle it there. Okay. Okay, so maybe so take a you piece? take. Yep. Okay. I will take this piece oh. and pass it around. Okay. Mm. Roma, you're not eating your mm. own cake. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Mm. There's something in it. Like, thank you. Mm. There's some berry. Be There's something nice in it. That's like a sweet meringue. A what? Mm. Sorry? A sweet meringue. We call it sweet meringue. And, and what's that? <laughs> it sounds very complicated. I'm not going to do any more. Complicated but nice. Lessons. You should pay and go and learn that thing. But anyway, guys, I'd like to say thank you to Alma. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for coming to teach us. Thank you so and much. also inspiring young ladies Definitely. out there. I'm mm. sure they've learned a thing or two. Yeah. Well, we've had a piece of cake, very mm. lovely cake, and I'm definitely signing up for the class because I want to make my own chocolate and red velvet you cakes. Sure. <laughs> we'll take a break and we'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you.
So for Lifestyle today, we are discussing a very interesting development um, that, ha that has happened over the past two days. We have all seen videos or had comments relating to the fact that uh, a lady by name, Moisha Boudon, um, granted an interview to Christian Amampo of CNN and made comments relating to the fact that in Ghana, due to the economic hardship, women have to hook up with men in order to survive. Yes, it's generated a lot of controversy um, um, and some issues. So we are going to look at the issue. We've interviewed people to hear what they have to say. So let's take a look at that and then we'll be right back. Ghana, it's like our economy is just such in a way that you just need someone to take care of you. It, why? Because you can't person, make enough money? You can't make enough money. As a woman here. As a woman here. Like, because even when you want to get an apartment in Ghana, you pay two years in advance. Wow. And I just started working. Where will I get money to pay for an apartment for two years? Are you basically telling me that you're having sex with this guy because essentially to pay your rent? Because he can afford to take care of you. But he takes care of me, my financial stuff. My apartment, my car, my rent, everything. Good. And, and, and Christiana, the same for you? Well, I'm not dating a married woman. So you're dating a single man yes. who nonetheless can take care of you. And what does he ask of you for that? What do you have to do for him? Like to have time for him, make sure you give him good food and then when he wants to have fun, you make sure you're ready. What does your man expect of you? He expects me to be loyal and just to date him only. And give him sex when he wants. Yeah. And what if you said no one day? He turns up at your house and you got a headache. What does he say? You can't say no. You have to give him what he wants. And what if you don't want it that day? That means he's going to, he's going to think you're cheating on him. Holy cow. Yeah, he's going to think you're cheating on him. And does your man have more mistresses? Yes. I believe um, her words is not a reflection of what is currently happening in Ghana because um, there are women, there are so many women who are entrepreneurs and um, it will surprise you to know that in some homes uh, there are some women who even act as the breadwinners of the house. So for her to make such a statement, honestly speaking, I am totally against it. It's quite surprising that in today's world you have people like her thinking that you need a man to be able to survive or you need a man to be able to make it. There are a lot of men out there, but how many of them are working? How many of them are rich? Think about how many of them are married. Think about how many of them are hooked up. Does it mean that whatever be the case, you should get yourself attached to somebody who can take care of you? She, she doesn't even know what love is. No, I, I, don't, I don't see reason why she, she was supposed to generalize it and say all women. But then I know some few ladies who are actually dating married men and then... They are, they are so okay with that, but there's not everybody who is really okay with that. We have women who are so okay without men. Personally, I don't agree with it. I think you should work hard because there are others there who are also doing it. For instance, I'm not going to brag, but I work outside the office issue. I also sell fabrics. So at least at the end of the day, I can buy whatever I want to buy. And also I'll cut costs. I won't have to buy Gucci bag with Gucci shoe when I know I can't afford for it. Because, in fact, when you're going for such things, then you should have more money because such things are expensive. Fine, that is Moisha Badon. But it doesn't mean any other lady has the same perception as she thinks. Because most women of nowadays think they can do whatever we the men can do. And they're working very hard and earning it. So Moisha Badon shouldn't confuse the girls growing up because they are thinking of making things possible on their own way. Yeah. That, that's what Ghana is. People are here. She's a celebrity. People are watching her. She's in video clips and all that. So what you, what you say actually goes far. People listen. What are you telling the youth of today? What are you telling the ladies who are coming up, who are looking at you and thinking that you're a superstar? They want to be like you. Then they're growing up and you are building laziness in their minds that all they can do is to make their bodies look okay, look all nice for a man. If once the man has got cash, good to go. Is that not what you guys want? That's not what we want. Not every guy wants like that. I think the comment is most unfortunate because she generalized it that women. Because some women I know are doing their genuine legitimate business, going about their daily duties, and they are making ends meet. They don't depend on men or do all sorts of things she claims she does before 
she can rent an apartment. So I disagree totally with her comment. So you've seen the video, you've heard what people think about it. Um, pretty interesting comments there. Mm -hmm. So ladies, what do you think? <laughs> My only problem with what she did or what she said mm -hmm. was the fact that she didn't seem to be saying it from her personal you know, perspective. I mean, I would have been happy if she kept repeating that I... Okay. For her. Yes. But to say in Ghana, women it, yeah. and generalizes is where it. I have an issue because I really can't say I have an issue with what she said because that's for her. Yeah. If it was for her, then that's fine. I, I want to say that in the midst of all of the... the conversation around what she said mm. and what she meant and what the reality is mm. I want to speak to women who have influence out there right. who have a story to tell it's about time we begin to tell those stories because the young women don't get to hear enough mm. of the success stories right. that women have and unfortunately um, when you want to, to ask of stories you get very few people being willing to tell their mm -hmm. stories right. sometimes because the stories are difficult to tell yeah but i feel that with what's happening this past week mm -hmm. women of all shades and sizes mm -hmm. and walks of life mm -hmm. and achievement and, and levels mm -hmm. should speak up on their stories because mm -hmm. we all have situations we've all been through we have our unique stories of where we've had the option to oh, go oh her way yeah. exactly and we've decided that we no, won't i mean it's always an option yeah. yes yes but it's uh, i guess uh, at this point we're grateful to our viewers for watching but we'll come same time next week we'll definitely we'll still we'll be, be here definitely. and we'll bring you special definitely. episodes of captured but what yes. have we spoken about throughout the whole capture well, we had Madmo, today. Yes. Yes. We had the, the communications director of madmo talking yeah. to us that's a madmo <laughs> <laughs> Not well, more. That's not more. Yes. <laughs> yes, not so talking more. to us about um, their preparedness right. for the rainy season. Yes. Unfortunately, it feels like we're already in the season. We're yeah. now preparing. Mm -hmm. So we hope that nothing goes mm -hmm. wrong. And mm -hmm. then we had Alma. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, Alma joined us. us about her, her journey yeah. from corporate into owning her own business. Mm -hmm. and, and then we talked about um, the purported fake journalists. Yes. yes. Um, and the they investigations the ongoing. Right. Right. And our hope is that this would be dealt with and we'll all know the outcome mm -hmm. um, so that we can come out of this a better people. Yeah, so yeah. certainly next week we'll come around, captured by women, same time, 3 p.m. on your favorite TV station, TV3. It will be myself, Petra, and Rosemont. So stay with us. We'll be right back next week, and have a good weekend. All Bye. Right. We're Bye. going to eat our cake. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>